Oh, something else you might find interesting. I took one of these caps and tried to crack it open and I'm not sure what this is, but this is a very hard ceramic-like outer jacket and inside appears to be a rolled up paper cap. I'll try to chip away more of this so I can verify that for sure. Hmm, curious. They sure didn't have plastic film caps back then. Let's see what the parts list has to say. Well, I'm guessing that's what these... Yeah, it's got to be all these, these tubular high temp capacitors. So it's just theoretically possible they could be rolls of some kind of mica. They didn't really have uh, any kind of decent plastic back then, I don't think. Not polypropene or polystyrene or uh, polyester. Certainly the other manufacturers weren't using them. At least not that I've encountered. So I guess we can see a little bit here, I'm thinking, that whatever this thin transparent material is that's the dielectric sorry for the bad focus there the camera's confused by the background so if any of you know more about uh, what type of caps these may be I'd be interested and, uh, certainly um, take one out should be a 0 .047 400 volt cap and uh, see how it checks out. All right, let's see what we get. First, I'll try measuring the capacitance. See, two range point uh, 047 should be around here. We should get a nice distinct eye open. And we do not. We get a little bit of an indication around here, which is around point 0.1. And it's not very distinct, which indicates there's something wrong with the capacitor. So let's check for leakage. It's leaky even just at 100 volts. Should be good up to 400. 400 is just, it's, just <laughs> it's extremely leaky. So that capacitor is no good. So whatever material these are made of, it certainly did not hold up over time. Now I'm moving on to restuff the electrolytic capacitors. I just popped these two guys out for restuffing. There's five in total, and four of them have cardboard covers, and they are mounted on insulating wafers because the common can negative does not go to ground. It only does on this guy because this set uses both a B plus and a B minus. A lot of the caps are referenced to B minus, so they need to be isolated. Uh, since I had my capacitor bridge out, I thought before restuffing it, I'd give these a little test. This one looks okay. Not that you can uh, guarantee a cap's good just by looking at it, but at least visually, hey, it looks okay. But check out this guy. Crud coming out of all of the terminals. So, let's test this guy out first. Three sections. Two are 400 volts, one's only 50. I can't do the 50 leakage test with this one because it starts out at 100 volts. But well, we can do the other two. So let's start with this guy, the half moon terminal. I say half moon because there are symbols on the label that correspond to symbols carved into the base. This is the half moon. So it should be 80 at 400 volts. So, negative and Positive. Let's see what we get. Got this set for electrolytic. And let's try a leakage test. All the way up to 500. No leakage. Now if that's the only test you were going to do, you might think, hey, this is a great cap, really low leakage. I can keep using it. Ah. Well, let's see what happens when we check for the capacitance. Now, when you get a good capacitor, when you hit the capacitance on the bridge, the eye should open up wide and distinct. 
and we have nothing until you get way over counterclockwise it just means it's open there's two issues with these old caps they can get leaky which is a uh, most common problem but also they can just dry out and go open so if you only check for leakage hey no leakage great it's not shorted uh, no leakage you can keep using it you might think but it has no capacity so if I left this in the set it would essentially be doing nothing but eventually it could develop a short that's why you want to remove it from the circuit if you're going to say put new caps in underneath the chassis disconnect the old cap even if it's measuring open no guarantee it will stay open. Yeah, uh, for the heck of it, let's do the 40, which is the square, this guy. Bam, leakage on this one. This one's probably pretty much a dead short if it's, if it's solid light at the lowest voltage range. And yeah, full eye open, it's short. So one section is completely open, one section is completely shorted. No way! I'm going to leave this in the set. Uh, how about this guy, which, as I said, visually looks okay. Four sections already for 350 volts. Three of them 10 microfarad and 180. Alright, the half moon. That should be the 80 section. And let's see what we get. Leaky on 100 volts. If it's not really leaky, the light will flash. When it's on solid, it's very leaky and it's only at 100 volts. Now, it may reform. So I'll leave this at uh, 3 for a while. After half an hour, there's absolutely no improvement. So I'm not going to muck around with this anymore. And it's measuring dead short as well. Alright, so enough of that. Let's put in some new capacitors.